don't know about y'all, but for me, gouache has always been a bit of a confusing medium. It's like watercolors, older, mysterious cousin that has more tricks of its sleeve. And yet I feel like it's not the most popular medium, especially prior to the popularity of the Hemi gouache sets. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about gouache. What is it? What are the different kinds of gouache? For example, what is acrylic gouache compared to traditional gouache? And where do Hemi gouaches fit in in all of this? While I swatch some of these paints and then towards the end of the video, I'm gonna do several little paintings for you guys so you can really see how it performs. First, I wanna start off by talking about I think the part of gouache that is the most confusing, which is actually just the definition of what gouache is. Unlike literally every other medium, gouache is actually more defined by its characteristics than the actual medium. So let's start with a painting definition. So what is paint? Paint is basically a pigment. That's the thing that gives it color. Uh, usually it's some kind of ground up rock or ground up synthetic, and it's usually bound in something because if we just have the pigment plus water and then we apply it to a piece of paper or a canvas, it's going to flake off and not be stable. And it's also not going to be as lustrous and beautiful. So over the years, people have been binding all of their pigments in various mediums. And so you have things like egg tempura, which is bound in egg whites. You have oil paint, which is bound in oil. You have acrylic, which is bound in a polymer and you have watercolor, which is bound in gum Arabic. Now gouache is bound in both gum Arabic and polymers. That's where you get traditional gouache and you have acrylic gouache. So if it has different mediums, why is it called gouache? Well, the simple answer is gouache is actually more defined by how it works. I always think of gouache as kind of like the blue collar paint medium. And that's because gouache as we know it now and how we use it now was largely sort of designed and solidified for illustrators. So there was a time when, you know, before the widespread use of photography and certainly before digital art, illustration was king in advertising. And so whether it was for a magazine or for a billboard, people who would paint in order to create illustrations would usually paint in gouache. And the reason for that is because it's layerable, it's opaque, and most importantly, it's matte. Why would matte be so important for print illustrations? Well, if you've ever taken a picture of a shiny painting or a wet oil painting, you'll know that contending with that glare is so hard. So having a medium that is incredibly opaque and matte is super helpful if you're wanting to make illustrations with the purpose of photographing them specifically for print illustrations. So this brings us to the next part of our video, which is what are the different kinds of gouache mediums and how do they work? So now that we know gouache is defined by its characteristics more than everything, we can kind of talk about traditional gouache versus gouaches that use polymer and there's even different kinds of gouache with polymer but let's start with the traditional so like I said in the beginning gouache and watercolor are basically cousins brothers if you will you can actually use traditional gouache and most gouache for that matter very similar to how you would with watercolor which means that you can add water to it and it'll thin it out and give you nice lovely washes a lot of gouache painters I know especially those who paint with traditional gouache which again uses gum arabic as a binder in the same way that watercolor uses it will actually start with a watercolor like base and then as they work through the paintings their layers will become thicker and more opaque in that way it's actually funny because gouache kind of operates like oil and that you need to paint from lean to fat or like thinner layers to thicker layers but the thing that's tough about that is that it's also bound in gum arabic so they're bound in the same thing that's why they're cousins however the thing that differentiates this kind of gouache is that it has a higher pigment load Higher pigment load basically just means that there's a lot more pigment per unit of binder. And the pro is obviously that this becomes a lot more opaque and it covers much better than watercolor. However, the trade-off is it becomes a little less stable. And what that usually looks like is it cracks. So after it completely dries, it can sort of crack off and flake. Kind of like in the beginning of the video when I told you that pigment just bound in water wouldn't be stable, you reach a point with every medium where if you add too much pigment, it becomes not very stable. This brings us to the introduction of acrylic wash. So these illustrators still needed <laughs> their medium to be layerable and opaque and matte, but they needed a better binder so that they could really push the limits of their medium and have more edits without risking the integrity of their illustrations. So during this time, acrylic paint was really becoming its own thing. It, people were finding it to be really useful, really stable, great for students. And so they chose to keep all the same uh, features 
of a, of a traditional gouache, but they used a polymer base as its binder. So whenever the manufacturers were coming up with this acrylic gouache, they said, let's keep it flat. Let's keep it to where water sort of makes it into more of a wash and let's keep it really matte and layerable. And that's where you get the advent of different kinds of acrylic gouache. So now let's talk about the pros and cons. So the key term here is reactivity. So reactive just means that if you add water and paint or even just water to the, the paint, will it reactivate it? Reactivate it just means that the film of the medium hasn't formed so structurally sound that if you add water to it, will it make the paint wet and workable again? So I'm gonna pose this to you as a just like a neutral. It's not a good thing or a bad thing. Some artists like when their paint is reactivatable. So think of like an artist who's wanting to paint a watercolory sunset. Let's say they mix some orange and some pinks and it's not quite as vibrant as they want. If your paint is reactivatable, so for example, this would be your traditional gouache that's bound in gum Arabic, very similar to watercolor then by adding more paint and more water, they're gonna reactivate the sunset and it's still gonna stay workable, which if that's your goal, is great. However, if you're painting a ground layer that let's say it's bright orange and you're wanting it to contrast with like a still life on top of it that's largely white and blue, having your base layer be able to be reactivated is actually gonna be a negative because it's gonna reactivate the complement color and it's gonna make everything orange and muddy and brown. In this case, you would want to use something that has a polymer um, as its medium so that it can fully cure, form a film, you can paint on top of it without risking that underlayer becoming reactivated. And in this case, having it be reactivatable is a negative and you would probably want an acrylic wash. This brings me to Hemi gouache versus the other acrylic washes. So I'm thinking like the Holbein acrylic gouache. This is the Liquitex Professional acrylic gouache and the Hemi gouache. The Hemi gouache, I think, has made gouache back into the spotlight again. It's been really interesting to see. They're able to mass produce it, so the price point is able to be pretty low. And also they've done a great job with their marketing because it's I've seen so many people gravitate towards this medium. And I will say what's really interesting about the Hemi gouache is that it, whenever you're painting with it, it's not reactivatable on the canvas or on the paper. And yet, if your paint dries out in its little tubes or in its um, containers, it will you can reactivate it with water. Unlike the Holbein and Liquitex acrylic wash, where if my paint was to dry out in my little container, uh, if it were to dry out, then you couldn't reactivate it with water. It would be a solid little puck and I'd have to kind of start over. And so for that reason, I think the Hemi gouache is really kind of an interesting gouache. Admittedly, I've never painted with a jelly gouache. I've heard that it's not quite as opaque as these professional grade acrylic gouaches. And that for me would be kind of a deal breaker. Since I haven't ever painted with it before, I'm not going to be too critical and just say like try them out. And especially since the price point on the Hemi gouache is so incredibly low compared to these professional gouaches, I have a hard time deterring people from that. Um, but I think it's really interesting that it does that. And I think it just really shows the versatility of the different mediums that you choose with your paint. Let's talk a little bit about recommendations here at the end of the video. The short of it is I think gouache is a fantastic medium for newer painters. And here's why. If you gravitate a little bit more towards the watercolor, um, you know, you like the washier look, um, you wanna be able to see your lines underneath, you want the versatility, I definitely would recommend the traditional gouache. And here's why. Watercolor on its surface should be a pretty uh, user-friendly medium. It's a fairly easy setup. There's no odors. It's usually a little more on the inexpensive side compared to other mediums. Um, and yet, because there's so much permanency in watercolor, you know, you lose your whites, you can only work one direction. It's hard if you mess up to come back from it. That's what makes watercolor a little challenging. And because the traditional gouache gives you the ability to opaquely layer over your mistakes, it's, it's basically the best of both worlds. And for that reason, I definitely would recommend the traditional gouache if you like watercolor. If you're a little more inclined to wanting something that looks a little more graphic, bold, illustrative, you've, you've been curious about acrylic before, I would definitely recommend the acrylic wash. I found these to be very user-friendly. You A little bit goes a long way. The price point is pretty similar to acrylic, or at least the acrylics that would give you the same level of opacity. I feel like as far as bang for your buck, as, as far as opacity, 
definitely the acrylic gouaches, to my best judgment, are, are the best. Um, and also with the Hemi Jelly gouaches, it gives you kind of another price point with all of the user-friendly aspects that I just mentioned. So for that reason, I found myself to be quite the fan of gouache and something that I would definitely recommend. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care, happy painting, and I'll see you in the next video.